viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel we've got this ford explorer sport track that was towed in earlier in the week i didn't have a chance to get to it i was towed in like on a wednesday or something i think somewhere is around there it's saturday evening five o'clock not much going on hung out with mrs owen the chillings all day so i thought we'd come down and see what's going on with this thing uh, I had my brother and a couple guys from his shop come out and push it in because they had about two feet of snow piled on top of it. So I let it sit overnight. It's all thought out. I don't recall the story if it just quit on them or it wouldn't start either case. I didn't talk with them a whole lot other than the fact that it doesn't start. So I think we'll begin where we typically begin. We'll just uh, do a health check on it here. See if we have any codes in anything. Surprised. Oh, it's gonna, oh, there's a PCM. I was gonna say, usually it checks the PCM first. Apparently, it doesn't. Uh, looks like we have some codes. Whether or not they're gonna give us direction, I don't know. Uh, this is easy enough to do. So, we'll go through and see. Oops. See what we have for codes here. Just out of curiosity. Let's see, so on the gem we got tire pressure faults, fog lamp, battery too high, battery too low, loss of calm with BCM, loss of calm with ABS, so that's interesting to know, we'll keep that in mind. And just disabled by PATS, that would definitely make them not start, I'll tell you that. So what's interesting though is I got the key on right now and I, the first thing I did look at was a security light and I did not see any flashing security light. Alright, so I saved that report. We're going to keep this stuff in mind. The PAT system has me pretty concerned there. Um, I tell you what, let me... We're just going to clear the codes out of it. I do have, we don't, we're not worried about any type of freeze frame data here. I'm just kind of curious to see what, uh, what comes back and that could just narrow our focus down pretty quick. Now typically, I'll just tell you, you don't go in if you're dealing with drivability problems, go in and just clear codes. Um, that's probably negligent of me to have done that or shown that, but I saved all the original data. So I'm not too worried about this. Right now, in our PCM, we're gonna have our P1000 code because it's been cleared. And in the gem, there's two codes for the tire pressure sensors. So we hop in the vehicle, so the key's on right now. We can see there's our security light up there, flashing, key's off. So that's normal, we'll turn the key on. Red light comes on and then goes out. We don't even have a glimmer of hope here. I don't see the tack moving either, so that's kind of peculiar. But not all vehicles will shake the tack when she cranks. I'm just going to do a rescan here just to see if we come up with any, any other codes and what we had. Now I see this truck is the aftermarket special. This thing is loaded with everything from remote start to you name it to add it on, it's got it. All right, so we're right where we were at, our two tire pressure sensor codes, and it should be our P1000. Tire pressure sensor faults, not worried about those. P1000, I don't believe we have a problem with the security system at this point. All right. So I just want to skim through some data, um, just kind of see I picked out a few data pit just kind of see what things look like here before we get too awful far. So it appears that we do have fuel pressure. Of course, you can't always can't always rely on that pid, but that seems legit. You know, we'll cycle the key. So that seems, you know, we could always double check. I'm just trying to do some driver seat diagnosis here. So we'll watch that engine RPM. And that does not change. 
that that I believe should be live on the scan tool. So the crank fueling disable PID. I'm not 100% sure what that is. I th maybe if it's in clear flood mode. I don't know if that changes from yes to no. No, it does not. So that's interesting. Not 100% um, familiar with that data pit without looking it up. So I guess we'll kind of disregard that for right now. But uh, and the cam crank synchronized. You know that's not going to change status until it starts and runs. But the uh, engine RPM per minute that does concern me. I wonder. Let's see what's another live data. So our mat, we had our mass airflow pulled up. That that should change voltage status. Yeah, and it does. All right. Well, so I'm assuming that we have no spark, no injector pulse, and potentially no crank signal. That's going to be my guess. But it's time to get dirty now. So it's always my habit to do a little. Uh, visual inspection so our crank sensor lives right down here at the front of the crankshaft I don't know if this is going to have anything to do with it but you can see how much I can zoom in on that I don't know what it's going to focus on looks like there's some leaves and crap wedged between the balancer and the crank sensor now that is not the pickup for the crank sensor but I can see where they've been rubbing on the crankshaft so it's kind of peculiar I'm going to take and uh, it looks like this poor guy's belt is shredding on something here. I see belt residue all over everything. So that's interesting. What am I, some kind of moron? Answer is staring me right in the face and I don't even look at it like a complete idiot. So we got brake or belt dust everywhere. And I'm like, I wonder why the belt dust is there. You ding dong. Well... If we look at that harmonic balancer, don't you find it kind of odd that it's got two pulleys and four four liters never have two pulleys? Big dummy. And look at the crank pulley. It's jammed way into the crankshaft sensor. So it's probably cut the crankshaft sensor in half. <sighs> what an idiot. I was just going to tell you guys too. You know, so with the belt dust on these, so on the Ford... Uh, four liters. I've seen it's on three liters too. The front crank dampeners, the uh, harmonic balancer. I'm freaking embarrassed right now. The rubber will come loose and the outer ring will come off, and you crank them over, and you won't have any accessories moving. The truck will start, but everything will be sitting stationary. Clearly, that's what's happened here. However, I don't know how in the thunder this happened, and his belt did not fall off. It's actually jumped back onto the rubber portion. Of the harmonic balancer where the metal ring used to sit and it cut its own grooves and cranks and spins and all that stuff what a moron i can't believe this is what you give working on a saturday man how did i look right at it and then go to pick a chunk of wood out of it like jeez what's the matter with me so chances are We'll pull this belt off. Let me see if I can get a balancer. Maybe Vance Auto Zone. Maybe they have a balancer for it. They're pretty common. I can't believe that. That's about the most embarrassing moment of my life. Not the most, but it's up there pretty good. Gotta try to redeem myself in this video. Uh, that is slightly embarrassing. Uh, needless to say, though, I called Advance or looked online. They don't have one at our local store. The nearest one is Horseheads. I don't want to drive an hour. I didn't get in the zone. First time I called the Auto Zone. That was a timely experience. Gave the guy the part number, he went back, physically touched it with his hands, it's in Corning, we're gonna go get it. I'll stop in advance on the way back through, grab the crank sensor that they had in stock. It was kind of funny, because I asked the guy at AutoZone, what's his physical address, because I've never been there. He didn't know. Suggested that I Google it, so I did. Let's ride. I'm still so disappointed in my visual inspection skills. They call it a visual inspection and I stare right at it. Take the next right. <sighs> I don't blame you if you guys give me a thumbs down. I've lost all faith in me. I almost have to put the video out now. Alright, here we go. It's tundra time.
get in the zone. What a bunch of snot nose pimple face freaking teenage kids working here. We left what, 20 minutes ago? I called him, gave him the part number, asked him to physically touch the box, put it on the counter. I would be there to get it. Went through the whole tax exempt thing with him. That wasn't gonna fly. I get here, there's two boys working here. I asked the one boy, I called 20 minutes ago for a harmonic balancer. He wants to know what year, make, model, all that stuff. I said, I don't know, I talked to the other boy apparently, go ask him, I gave him the number. He physically went back and touched it, he can tell you. <sighs> Needless to say, before we left, there's three people at my counter, including a manager, and it turned into a complete <laughs> show. I'm, this freaking place is a joke. I tell you what, when you walk into a place like that, and they got Nirvana cranking so loud you can hardly talk to the kid that's there attempting to help you, it's pretty unprofessional. And nothing against Kurt Cobain and the three strings on the guitar that he can actually play, but I'm just saying. It was cranking. It was ridiculous. I don't know what the application process is there. Perhaps it's a single question application where it says, do you have a pulse? Yes. Okay, you're hired. Or perhaps they stick a mirror under your nose. If you fog it up, you get a job. <sighs> I should have just stayed home, ordered it, got it on Monday. Everybody'd be happy. Anyhow, sorry about the pissing and moaning. belt wasn't slipping like crazy because it doesn't look like the crank pulley has been like that since yesterday the day that it quit but it's got some pretty good grooves wore in it of course all the belt powder that's everywhere so. see it's got a brand new all maker hopefully somebody didn't misdiagnose that and just put a shorter belt on it or something <laughs> Oh, should be substantially different in size. So I think what we're going to attempt to do here is pull the fan off. Give us a little room to work. Hopefully be able to get that crank pulley out of there by doing so. Looks like there's a couple bolts on this fan shroud. Let's see, righty tighty. steering's over here, we gotta move that. should be loose at this point I think I don't know how many bolts are on it usually just two oh, peak. oh she's a two-piece here look at that way to go forward the upper half of the shroud comes off and the lower half stays even better in order to do that however we have to pull tells it's got silver seal on it oh, we have to pull the upper radiator hose so we'll give her a little sucky sucky. Get rid of some of the coolant. With our fluid extractor. That should get it down just about to the level of this upper hose. Or close enough where we won't make a huge mess. Get us a diaper. Just to be on the safe side. Should have the old pig under here. AKA Pig Mat, generic brand. There's that little fella. Don't make a big mess on us now. Oh, look at that. No mess made at all. Looks like a thermostat house and it's leaking like a sieve over here, though. Pretty common 4 0 problems. Looks as if 
there are some release tabs down here on this shroud that we can push in on and pull up at the same time. Now there's two of them. So we might have to get a little tension on one. I'll show you here in a second. Come on, baby. That side. Well, that half's loose. So here's those little tabs I was just pushing on. You can see they got a little tab. <laughs> I guess it sticks out. You just push them in. Now they're plastic, so beware. Two over on the driver's side. Of course, the two on the passenger side we just did. And then out comes the half of the fan shroud. So it looks like we have an electronic discus coupler of sorts with a red lock. Hopefully we can get that red lock tail take it right out of there. Must be the guy at Ford teamed up with the guy at Chrysler. Put that in. We'll unhook the wiring harness from it. That went right onto the floor, which is good. Just the wire retainer. We need it. And there's that. Take this whole harness right out. Get out of there. Well, you know what? Yeah. Is that one bolt? That's one bolt. Looks like somebody's had that bolt out recently. Wrong size, fella. Hand that out. Mmm. This connector is all zip tied too, so we're gonna to touch that. We'll set that right to the side. Let me find that little black clip I dropped. So now we have to remove the fan clutch. So it's gonna take your standard 36 millimeter fan clutch or wrench. And we're gonna hold the bolts with our bolt holding apparatus. See if I got enough lead in my pencil to break this thing loose. Sometimes it can be a tad on the snug side. That one was not too bad, not gonna lie. This one is right hand thread. All right, that's good. That'll be stiff enough that we can just unch spin. Don't let it fall into the radiator, whatever you do. Because even if I put the little poke on it, that's a little poke in the right spot. Your little poke turns into a leak. So let's have a gander here at that little guy. So this is the metal clip I took off the back. How's that going? It goes on there like that and then it fishes down into there. So we don't want to snap it back together, but that's what that's going to look like when we're trying to do it on the car. Should be fun. It's going to latch into there and also latch into the bottom. Ooh, that's the trick right there. That's how you do it. Latch it at the top first and then off at the bottom. Check. There we go. Set that to the side, just so you know. I feel like such a moron. I shouldn't even got mad at the AutoZone guy because I made a mistake too. You know, his seemed a little more intentional than mine. Oh, that little son of a monkey is stuck. I thought we could just pull that ring off. And if this thing was a cobra, it would have bit me. Looking right at it. Of course, you don't. <coughs> I guess you don't think much. You know, you look at what appears to be a dual pulley. One's used, one's not. You just don't think of it. It's not uncommon to see a dual pulley and only one's used. Yeah, I am trying to make excuses at this point. The crankshaft sensor is clearly physically damaged. So we got to pull back a little bit. What size do you think that is in there? Let me give it the classic. I don't have a name for this move. Just using the middle finger. I don't know. I'm going to say... How fat is that? It's fatter than my finger. It's about that fat. Let's go with 18. Let's see if that fits. That's the survey say. 18. Ooh, I don't know. Bigger, bigger fella. My finger is about 18. What are we gonna say? What's your next guess? Well, the same as mine. It's not 18, it's 21. Definitely not 21. So if it's not 21, what is it? 
We're down to two, right? 19, that's right, you guessed it. 19, oh yeah, first try. And my half inch nano is at home, so we yank that back out. We're gonna go in with a 3 8 nano, see if it has enough beans. Am I going the right way? Let's wait for the compressor to kick off. All right, compressor is off. Out she comes, baby. Yeah, these key weight, I can't remember. We got a pole with a puller. What's the story? Anybody remember? I'm thinking probably. Yeah, it doesn't feel real wiggly. Let's have a gander through them holes. We'll get a mirror, get some pulling devices. Washer or is that the end of the crank? Or the end of the. That's not a washer. Alright, I was prepared for this. So inside, I don't know if you guys can see or not. Probably not because I gotta hold it just right to, to be able to see in there. So the bolt must not have, yeah, it doesn't. I was gonna say the bolt must not have a big washer on it. So. If we go in with a standard puller to push against the face of the crankshaft, we can't see it. So what we're gonna need to do is hopefully these holes align with something that resembles threads. It appears that one does. It appears that one does. So I grab my puller kit and as I was mentioning, what we're going to have to do is pick up our light for the 50th time. Right to send the light to the radiator. We'll stick that back in the corner of our blogs. Uh, let's see. I've got the deluxe bolt grip set right here. It's just your standard puller set. Nothing fancy. I'm going to go 8125. Let's see if we feel anything. See the holes in there. Pretty sure I could. Definitely not feeling anything though. I don't think that they misalign when this whole spiel spins. Maybe they're not eight millimeter. Boy, they sure look like it. I wouldn't think they could be anything else. Maybe they just need some persuasion. Oh yeah, there we go. Feels like it bit into something. Let's grab a socket for that. What size is it? 13. That's your guess? Anybody play some, play some bets? They ain't freaking long enough, I'll tell you that though. I've done these in the past. Questioning myself as how though. Oh boy. Oh man. I can't believe they'd be American. If they are, what would they be, 5 16 That'd be helpful because my 5 16 bolts are quite a bit longer. Perhaps. It feels just about the same. Of course, it's probably right full of rust. Um, well, it's hard to say. We're going to have to give a little toot. Let's see if we can shoot in there with something. We got some coil right here. I don't know if we're going to hit anything or way down in there. Let's add a big toot there. Alright, look at that. We got something in there. Let's go. Let's go at it again with the 8mm. It should be 8mm. You don't use anything American nowadays, right? It's junk, so it really doesn't matter what we get it off with. 
you know, 8 mil, she tightens up just like the 5 sixteenths. It's way too deep to get a thread chaser or anything in there. It doesn't look like it's messing up those threads. Go back with a 5 sixteenths, which are pretty close to the same thread pitch. However, I mean, they thread in. I think we're going to go 5 sixteenths simply because they're long enough. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if we can get her jammed in the other one. Like I said, this balancer's junk. It doesn't seem to be narring up the threads on our bolt. Let's see if we can find something for this to bite into. If it ain't 5 16 it's gonna be, baby. Say it doesn't really matter. It's going to the trash can. Just make sure we got a good enough grip. We could probably look up and see what it is. Yeah, it's not marring up our bowl at all. Let's go with it. Let's see, we'll grab two of them. What are these four and a half inches? We probably could use some fours. But I don't have any. Right off the end, anyways. We're gonna stick a couple bolts in here. Minister some beans to them. Oh, that thread's right in nice. We just want it enough to give us some grip to pull it out. Now, the problem is typically you just run a forcing screw in <coughs> and push against the end of the crank, put a, uh, you know, a pointed, a classic, you know, pointed bit on it, run against the crank. However, if we do this, we're gonna be in big trouble because, oh, you son of a monkey. We're gonna be in big trouble right now. Anyways, I don't know. We're gonna have to use a shorter forcing screw. Hopefully we're going to have enough throw. So what we need to do <coughs> is I've got some pieces of rod that I've cut for various applications in different lengths consecutively here. <coughs> Gosh, I got a frog in my throat. These will fit in the end of our pusher tool and then they'll slide right down in the end of the crankshaft. Find which one we need. Find the hole. Away we go. See, did I get it on the first try? That's wicked awesome if I did. So you see what I'm saying? That's going to go way down inside the crankshaft hole where it's threaded where the bolts go and push inside that blank hole. And that will allow us to pull this off. Pretty common setup like Chrysler's, some GM's. Let's grab a socket that fits that little guy. Three quarters, it appears. Look at that. Let's see, are we gonna have enough room? We don't wanna do radiator damage here. Okay, here we go. Get my broke down ratchet working. We're just gonna tighten this up. It should come off relatively easy because it should be key weight. Just drop my mirror. We'll have to fish that back. So we're just gonna keep cranking here. It's moving, so that makes me happy. We just gotta be careful when we get to the end. We don't want the whole kit and kabooey to come back. I gotta, I gotta retrieve my mirror here, folks. I'm sorry. Sorry about the distractions of this video. Some people in the comments complained about that. They told me my video sucked because I'm distracting. You know what I say? Don't watch them. Problem solving skills right there. But as I was mentioning, when we pull this, when she gets to the end of the rope, we need to catch the whole mess. Maybe I already said this. Or at least I'm thinking it. I don't want to have to buy a radiator, I guess is what I'm getting at. 
Now, some guys might be pissed because I took a 5 16 bolt and just shoved it in there. But like I mentioned, it doesn't matter because this is going in the garbage. Yes, if I was reusing it, perhaps I would consider some different options. But honestly, it doesn't matter right now. It feels like it's getting easy. So I'm just going to keep my hand between. I know you guys can't see. I just want to keep my hand between the ratchet and the radiator. Radiators are delicate. I'm going to get my ratchet back off. Get my socket back out. Oh, oh, oh. There she is. Come up out of there gingerly. So you can see our rod that we stuck through. Went straight in, pushed on the crank. I'm going to show you why. So here's the crank pulley. When you look down in there, the shiny spot you see is where the head of the bolt sat. Now if that was a washer that were to come off, then certainly down here on the crankshaft, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, you know, you could just push on the face of the crank one of those tapered cones. You know, no big deal. But these ones here, you don't have that option. If you were to push in here with a tapered cone, you're just fighting yourself and pushing against the pulley you're trying to pull. And here is our two-piece ring. Slides right off now, you try to slide off the backside. But interesting enough, how long do you think that this thing was being driven with the belt being installed on the broken portion of the dampener on the rubber to actually go through cut grooves and actually trick me to make it actually look like a regular pulley. I'm going to unplug the crank sensor, two wire, floating ground, inductive style crankshaft sensor. And a 10 mil, I think it's 10 mil bolts. Nope, definitely not 10 mil in here. Maybe eight. Yes, sir. Looks like a couple bolts that hold that on. Being we are right in the area. Oops, come on. Come on. There's one. Get my socket on. Get my bolt back. Must be another one around here. Ooh, I can feel you. Holy shnikes. Wait till you see this thing. Well, lucky, lucky. She cut a little chunk in it. I can't believe I'm such an idiot. Sit there and fish out a piece of wood as a piece of melted plastic, you ding dong. Whatever, I guess we're all subject to mistakes because we're fallible humans. We'll grab the bolts that were just recently removed. We're going to reinstall the new one. Looks a whole lot better than the old one. Let's see. If I can find the hole, there it is. Feels like it anyways. There's one. Then don't want to forget that. And the other hole there it is. Oh, ooh, Saturday hours. You mean you guys work Saturdays? I don't I ask questions like I expect a response. However, it's just me sitting here like a weirdo talking to my camera. That lubed up the end of the crank pulley, the new one that's going to go into the crankshaft seal. Now, there is a Woodruff key that you have to line up. Get that lined up, we'll give her a wiggle. It shouldn't go in too awful hard. Now, with this style crankshaft bolt, I'm not going to be able to use my installer. I don't believe. I'll double check that. I do have a crankshaft pulley installer. Now this style pulley, as you've seen, came off pretty easy, so they go on pretty easy also. We're definitely starting, 100%. I don't think we're in far enough to grab any threads yet. I don't believe so. I will double check that. I think I'm just spinning 
Nope, we did. We grabbed quite a few threads, actually. Where's my ratchet? I can say this should go on relatively easy. Shouldn't even turn the engine over. It's just a pretty precise fit, but usually the ones with the keyways. They're not tapered, so they go on pretty easy. But I do have a crankshaft pulley installer kit uh, because some of them are actually press on. However, this one does not. Now, if it's your own vehicle and you elect to change the crankshaft seal in the front of the timing cover, now is the time to do it. I did not get one for this vehicle. I think bone dry. If for some reason I create a problem here and have a leak, obviously I'll fix it, but I don't foresee any issues. Ah, uh, come on, there we go. See if we can get the rest of it. Found me now, well. Just need a couple more degrees. Good night. I'll let me turn the crank pulley a little bit. Woo! Holy shnikes! So the torque spec on these is 41 foot pounds and then another almost quarter turn, like 82 degrees or something. They're a son of a gun to hold because you gotta have a strap wrench. The appropriate one. If you don't, just use your old belt and a pair of vice grips. Wrap around the pulley, clamp them down tight, basically snug the bulb up. Pretty stinking tight. That's what the direction should stay. Stinking tight should be the spec. I just want to make sure the shards of belt are out of these pulleys. There's some garbage stuck in there. Oh man, I did a Colorado the other day. It came in with a complaint of a belt squeal. Of course, the water pump's like falling right off the damn thing, but the guy had sprayed like a whole can of belt dressing on it. What a mess. I mean, that brake clean wouldn't even touch this stuff. It was a mess. That pulley looks pretty good. Yeah, the inside groove is pretty good. So if you don't clean out the grooves, all this crap gets stuck to your new belt and you get problems. So just take the time to clean these out. That one's good. Anything on the roll there? I had another truck came in. I think it was a Chevy. Belt was squealing, chirping. Kind of like that one we did the video on with the misalignment. And one of my viewers a while ago, I don't remember which video or which comment it was or who, whoever it even was he stated to stop a squealy belt you throw some baby powder on it and I'm thinking what so naturally when that one came in before I fixed the problem on it I took and uh, took some tire talc so essentially baby powder put a little on the belt dead quiet how long it would last I don't know because I repaired the truck shortly thereafter but I thought it was pretty neat thought I'd share it with you it's like a life hack, really. I'm just out of curiosity. So this has a Deco belt that was on. This is the original one here. That's a 5060855. The belt we got at the Advance Auto. Show me the same thing. What we got here? 5060860. Somebody did put a smaller belt on it. That's awesome. I'm wondering if when this alternator was replaced, if that problem was overlooked. At least I'm not that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'll give myself that. Still super embarrassing. This is the kind of video, like when you do one of these, you're like, I should not put that out. 
People are going to lose all faith in me. I ask that you don't, though. Simple mistake. I just didn't have my lookers on, obviously. Where's my, uh, let me see my ratchet. I got my cordless one here. Maybe that'll work. That'll work. Get going the right way, it will. Cordless ratchet for a belt tension tool, sure. Boom, look at that. Technically it should run now. I'm confident in it though. Let's just finish putting it together. I mean, where can you go wrong with a BWD crank sensor, a Deco belt, and a Dorman crank pulley? What could possibly go wrong? Bob, what are you going to do at 6 o'clock at night on a Saturday? 5 or whatever time it was that we got here. There's no reason we can't put this on, right? No, we should be good. Because then with the fancy two-piece shirt. So this is the bolt holding tool. You can see how it's designed. Of course, it has inserts where you can put pins for the pin style. So it matters which way you put this as far as how it's going to hook them bolts on the water pump pulley. Now some pulleys do not have bolts sticking through. They got holes, so you got to put the pin kit in. Do not hit myself in the face. Then it's torque to factory specs right there. And now the fan shroud. Should very gingerly click on. Looks like it lines up with some tabs and a slot all at the same time. It does not line up with that slot. Who am I kidding? Look like it should though. But it doesn't. Yeah, that's all clicked in. Now we got some fancy bolts to stick back in it. Come little guys. Make sure you get the right bolts. You get ones too long, you're gonna have a leak. Find us a socket that fits. We're almost done. Plastic now. Go easy on it. Way down yonder. Sounds good. Oh, you know what, you big dummy? We should have hooked our wire up before we got too far. Now I, now I have a hard time demonstrating. I'm glad I demonstrated that uh, outside the vehicle so you guys know what to do. I am going to take the little rubber that goes around the harness and install it on the harness prior to slipping it back into that groove there. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can do this. Remember, we got to put the... Man, this was foolish. Why the heck did I skip this step? I'm really slipping today, I'll tell you that. I should take a day off. plugged in before we get too far. Ooh. Let's see. She's plugged in. I wonder why all the zip ties and stuff on. I wonder if you had some kind of issue here before. Dropping everything. And then as I said, we're gonna put the metal bracket in the top slot first. And we should be able to, in theory. <laughs> I totally had that going backwards, you idiot. Put it in the top slot first, like I say. backwards you guys should not be watching my channel for advice there <laughs> See, that was easy once you third try and I found the missing eight millimeter right. that bracket is adjustable I just put it back where they had it. I don't really see the purpose of it. The fan's not going to hit it. 
Uh, let's see, do we have to pull the radiator jug off first? No, because that sat out of the way. Ah, the radiator jug's what go goes down in that little slot. Stick that on there. Oh, how many bolts we got left? We got three left total. One for power steering. We'll do that one first because we got our eight millimeter handy. What's red and green say? If women don't find you handsome, at least they find you handy. Okay, that got some red and green chill. Bring this bag over without snapping your fingers. Line it up right where it was. I mean, nobody even knows we were here. We have to find the 10 mil side. It's over here. That should be the two remaining bolts. PMS fault. All right, well, we knew about that, right? Well, she starts and runs. That's good. Let's give her one more go here. Yeah. Folks, that's it. We're gonna leave it at that. So here's our broken parts. So here's our crank pulley that I embarrassingly overlooked initially. Nailed it like a boss, so the second look around. But it is pretty peculiar. I mean, check that out. Look how good of a groove that belt actually wore into the rubber to actually make some part of my mind check out and just say, that's a dual pulley system and they're not using that inner pulley that's obviously ate a hole straight through your crankshaft sensor. Something in my mind said that to me, and I listened to it. Well, it's kind of neat to see what it's done to that crankshaft sensor. Cut the perfect groove, finally got to the electronic portion of it, and says, no more. So that's that. Now, of all people, I should know better. This was a very common problem on these 4.0s. Used to see it a lot, like I mentioned earlier in the video, they'd come in with the shaking you know, problem, the you know, vibration, engine vibration knocking noises squealing complaints belt slipping battery light on you know you name it but you get out there and look and more often than not the pulley was you know perfectly in line you know you couldn't tell visual inspection a lot of times you got a mirror and you looked whoa, look down there you would see chunks of the rubber missing or you would see the rubber dust coming out or you get in the car and start it and notice that none of the accessory drives turning but the crankshaft is you know that kind of stuff I'm just trying to justify my mistake here is what it is I'm just human just like you and you make mistakes too just like me and we're gonna move on one mistake you don't want to make is not clicking that subscribe button go down there and do that ring the bell get the notifications find us on patreon Google Plus and Facebook and just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching <laughs>